Hello, my name is Jack Ward, and today we're going through an overview of the Ghidra client. Some requirements for this tutorial is that you have Windows or Ubuntu installed, and that you also have the Ghidra client installed, and you need to have both dependencies of the JRE and the JDK. If you don't have all that set up, you can check out some of my previous videos called Installing Windows VM in Proxmox, Installing Ghidra, and also Setting Up Ghidra Server if you really want to get into the more advanced features of Ghidra. The best way to do that is to search Striker2K2 on YouTube. If you guys like the content that I'm putting out and appreciate the tutorials, well show me some support by clicking the like button, commenting, and subscribing. Something that I want to see in the comments today is you telling me what software reverse engineering environment you use. And if you don't use any software reverse engineering environments, well, what do you use or what do you want to use in the future? I'm going to be using Proxmox as the basis for my virtual environment in this tutorial. In which, in my Proxmox, I have my Windows 7 machine already installed. If you have Ubuntu, that's fine. Feel free to follow along. All I ask is that you already have Ghidra installed and that you have the Java dependencies for Ghidra. All right, so what do you say? Let's get to it. All right, here I have my Windows 7 virtual machine already set up and ready to go. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to get an executable that we can actually use inside of Ghidra so I can show you some of the user interface features inside of Ghidra. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to download crackme.exe off of GitHub. And this link is going to be provided down below. So once you get to GitHub, you're going to see a series of crackme files. For this one, we're going to just look at the very first one. 00 is going to be the easiest, all the way down to 09 being the more difficult. I'm going to click on it once. It's going to bring me to this page. Let's click on download and let's save the file. I'm going to click on this download button here. It's going to take me to the download folder and I'm just going to put this guy onto my local machine by holding control and dragging. I'm going to close out of both of these. So before we run Ghidra, let's see exactly what this crack me does and why am I using it? So I'm going to CD into my desktop, and then I'm going to run CrackMe. All right, so what this CrackMe program does is it merely prompts you for a password. Your job in this reverse engineering experiment is to find out what that password is. And it is not 1234. And it is not ABCD. So... In future videos, we will go through and find out what this password is. But right now, we are using CrackMe so we can get an idea of what the Ghidra interface looks like. So we're going to close it for the time being. And let's go ahead and open up Ghidra. And I have an icon on my desktop. If you want to know how to put that icon on your desktop, check out my video called Installing Ghidra. I lead you through not only how to install it, but how to put an icon on your desktop so you can really quickly access it. So before I jump into I, before I jump into putting the file into Ghidra itself, I want to take a look at the scheme that I have. My scheme is in a dark mode scheme, and I think it's very important for us nowadays. So that's the first thing that I'm going to show you guys on how I made it a dark scheme. So I came up into Tool Options, and then I clicked on Tool, the fourth icon for me. And here where it says Inverted Colors, it wasn't originally unchecked. I went ahead and I checked it. I hit Apply. And then I hit OK. It immediately wanted to change my look and feel to metal, in which I allowed it at the time. But as I've gone through, I found out that Windows Classic works a lot better for the dark theme. So now we're ready to jump in to crack me. So let's go ahead and click File, New Project. We are going to do a non shared project for today. If you want to use a server, you would use Shared Project. I do have the server set up. But for this tutorial, we're going to go with non-shared project. Then I'm going to make a project called test. Now that we have a project, we can drag crack me into the project and load it into the project. 
All right, so we're going to be loading it as a PE with the default language of Windows x86 and the program name crackme.exe, crackme0x00.exe. Let's click OK. Give it a little bit to import the file. And then this import result summary window will give you a couple ideas of what you're looking at, just really high level. For example, there's going to be an x86 file for Windows. It is going to be used in the little Indians, and it was compiled with an unknown Visual Studios compiler. Let's go ahead and jump into it. And now that we are ready and this is able to be clicked, we're going to click on the, the code browser. All right, so a lot of times when you start up this program, it comes up with a blank screen. Hopefully yours is not blank. Hopefully it's filled with a lot of information. But if, if you're one of those people like me where it does not come up natively, you can always come over to File, Open, and merely try to open it again. Once you do that, it will pop up and it will ask if you want to analyze it. I always select yes. Right. So a lot of the default analyzers are already clicked and enabled. But I found out that this one is also a, a, a very particular one that I like to use. And I always select it whenever I'm analyzing, analyzing my malware. All right, so at the very bottom, it is doing some loading with progress bar. So I'm going to double click on this top level bar here. And it kind of puts everything into perspective. So I can see even this bottom right hand one better. This is an error that always comes up. Don't let it freak you out. Go ahead and click OK, and let's continue on. So this is going to be a generalized overview of Ghidra. So we are looking at the workspace and trying to figure out how to work with the workspace. So first thing is I want to look at some of these bars up here, some of these icons on this bar. So of course, we have our Save button. Any changes you make in the executable, you can save them. And we have a lot of icons up here, but my favorites are over here to include this binary window, this decompiler window, the script manager, and the graph. Once you, once you select a function, you can click on this graph and it'll show you where the function lays and the overall scheme of very things by pulling up the graph. Also, any one of these buttons, if you click them, if that window is already present, the program itself will let you know that that window is already present. So if you want to click the compile with me a couple times, let's see what happens. I click it once. I don't know where it is. It doesn't really show up. So I click it again. I click it again until the program gets kind of um, frustrated at me and then it really starts highlighting where exactly on my screen that window is in many different and funny ways. All right, on our left hand side we have our program tree, our symbol tree, and our data type manager. In the dead center we have our listings window. This is where all the assembly code is shown and then here's our decompiler window along with a console in the bottom for scripting. So in our program trees it shows us pretty much the PE header. It shows us that it has a text, a data, an R data, a BSS, and an I data in this particular binary. Something that a lot of people like to do is they like to they like to modularize this by dominance. They believe that it's a lot easier to, to search through and find what you're looking for by coming to this Donovan's thing. So let's go ahead and click on it and see what it does. One thing that I see that it is useful for is it really quickly points out some of the things that are more important, like this. This is absolutely important, the main function. It makes it really quick and easy to find the main function. There's other uses for this, but this is the one that I found that if I were to use this, this would be the main reason why I use it. And if you see, it already brings me straight to the main function. We will get to that later. So let's go ahead and minimize this for now. But since we do have a function highlighted, let's go back one step and click on this display function graph. Now we get a really clear view of what the display function graph can do now that we have selected a function. All right, next is the symbol tree. We had a couple items over here and anytime 
that you are that you have a question about what an item does or what the symbol tree does in this case anywhere in Ghidra you can click F1 on your keyboard and it will bring up not only will it bring up the help it will bring up the help page for exactly where you are at in the Ghidra program right then so this is bringing up the help page for the symbol tree so the symbol tree we have our imports these are needed files that your crackme.exe or your malicious file requires in order to run this one requires kernel 32 and msbcrt exports are the functions that can be utilized by external means and then functions are a list of all the functions that you currently have in your program all right so something that i like to do is i navigate through the functions with my left and right key makes it relatively easy to sort through them so right opens it up opens up the folder or expands the folder or expands the tree or the branch all right so labels as you go through and if you label some functions to a label that is more convenient to you they're going to show up here in the labels and of course get classes and namespaces so something that you can do with the symbol tree that i find very helpful is you can filter through all six of these folders just merely by typing in what you're looking for which i am looking for main so i click on this and it refreshed the listings which is the assembly code window and then it refreshed my decompiler my c window so i am now for sure that i am inside the main function i'm going to go ahead and clear that out and then i'm going to hit my left button multiple times until it gets to a more presentable display and right, then we can also go to the data type manager here in the data type manager you can do a couple things i'm going to go ahead and open up crack me and then we're going to scroll down see what data types are inside of our crack me executable which i see that inside of our crack me executable we have the data type of string let's go ahead and right click on that find uses of and it's going to pop out to this window right here. It's going to show us the different types that the different times that the data type string was used in our executable. So I always like starting from the very top, and it brings my assembly viewer to right here. I'm going to go ahead and click the next one down, and which it once again finds it in assembly and brings up this in which there are strings that correlate with this entry right here. This right here is called your listing view. Once again, this is where most of the assembly code is found. Uh, in here, there's a couple different things you can do. You can hover above anything you want to and it will give you a pop-up with more relevant information. If you don't want this pop-up or if you only want it for a couple of certain times and certain reasons and this isn't one of them you can always come up to these icons and click on this button that toggles the mouse hover pop-ups once you click on it and it shows up with that red slash then you don't have to worry about it popping up in your face anymore you can navigate through it uh, much much easier right. and if something doesn't quite add up or if it doesn't look right proper to you you can always click on this and this will allow you to change some of the column widths if you don't need to see all the bytes or if you only need to see a couple rows you can easily scoot it all the way over or you can bring it all the way back out you can do this for for pretty much anything all right so i'm going to go ahead and close that and then what we can see here is the assembly code tries to give you some idea as to what is going on by naming some of the functions and some of the data types. So what I want to do is I'm going to make a couple comments here in the assembly code by right clicking, hovering above comments, and selecting, I'm going to select EOL comments, which is end of line comment. Whenever you select any of the comments, you can put any of the four comments there. It comes up with the same window. So what I'm going to do really quickly is I'm going to write EOL comment here. I'm going to write pre comment here. 
post comment. I'm going to write in plate comment. And in doing this, you will see how each comment displays itself on your user interface. So for plate comment, it pops up right there above what you wanted to comment in a very large, bold way, trying to be as visible as possible. Then your preview comment, of course, goes before what you were originally trying to comment. The post comment comes afterwards, and then your end of line comment over here. This makes it very easy for you to comment whatever you want, wherever you want, inside of the assembly code. But if we look over here, it has replicated into our decompiler. Here is the pre-comment over what I wanted to pre-comment. So the decompiler window is amazing. It makes things so much easier to see. Uh, inside of this window, you can rename anything in here that you want. So all these are dot text, dot text, dot text, dot text. But as I read this, I see clearly that this is printing a string. So instead of naming it dot text, I want to name it print string. Yes, if we remember when we ran it earlier, that was exactly what it printed when we ran the crack me. Here it is. It prints that, and then since it also prints password, you see that it changed both this and this. So the decompiler is very powerful. We're going to be working more with renaming functions in the decompiler and editing functions in the decompiler in other videos. In this video, I want to highlight just the overall user interface to include how when I selected the when I just when I demonstrated the display bytes, it showed up here along with defined strings. They're also over here. In which you can access all these windows as well by clicking on this window button. And if we want to move the bytes somewhere else and only have defined strings and decompile in this window, we can take it and then click on this highlighted yellow portion and drag it over here. Now we have the listings view, which has the assembly code and bytes both in this window while well, we have our decompiler over here. Edrit is a very, very powerful tool. And um, I'm looking forward to using it more and more every single day. So that is all that I have for this tutorial. That was a look into Ghidra Client and the interface of it. If you have any questions, please reach out to me and in any of the social media links below. And also, please like, comment, and subscribe. Hey, thank you all for joining me in this overview, and we'll see you next time.